Little black book. You know what time it is. 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 Hey guys, and welcome back to Little Black Book. Or for those you know, Little Black Book, you know what time it is. Listen, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for notification of the uploads, baby. And for those of you who are returnees, mineral, mineral, mineral gang, mineral, mineral, mineral gang. You ain't got the minerals, you ain't got the minerals. Ooh, that sounds sweet, baby. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? Game. Let's get into the video. We'll talk to you guys about celibacy. Um, and it's our 27th, I think we're like 27th month now, or something like that as well. Um, praise God. Woo woo! Listen, um, so we're gonna talk to you guys about innuendo king. So, yes, um, I decided to do this video because I really want to talk about this because I remember I was just having a talk uh, with some people at a university recently and I was just kind of exposing myself and some of the truthfulness. And one of the hardest things I believe that I struggled with not with the, in terms of celibacy but in terms of leading me down a place um, that I didn't really want to go to in a sexual format was dealing with my tongue now the Bible talks about how you know um, the tongue um, the tongue is untamed and it's, it's 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 it can turn ships and rudders and cause fires and such and such and the tongue is just like that it's just so potent it can even spit poison, you understand? Um, as we always say, there's life and death in the tongue. And so what I wanted to kind of talk about was actually some of the struggles that I faced early on. So um, before I got to a point where I was celibate, I had a conversation with God, which was real. Yeah, and I've done a video about this. And I said, look, God, I can't stop the flirting because the flirting is a part of me and I love the flirting. And the reason why I couldn't stop the flirting is because when I was a little, when I was young, I was a bit fat. I was a bit, I was a fat kid, right? Yeah, I had breasts. You understand? Yeah, probably B or C cup. Yeah. Listen, I couldn't have no. I didn't really have no game. I didn't really have to get girls. You understand? I was just kind of funny. You know, when I put the African accent on, you know, people they start laughing. You know. So um, one of the ways that I was trying to that I, I was trying to find how do I get closer to the opposite sex? How do I draw them in a bit more? All right, I need to develop my personality, and it's I didn't really think of it like that, but. You are thinking subconsciously, how do I get close to these girls? So one of the ways I would do is I would have conversation with the girls, I would become their friend and never get the girl, right? But another way was actually to, to flirt, was to, to exercise my innuendo skills, right? And so I wanted to break it down what innuendo actually means and then we'll go into the video for deep. An innuendo is an elusive or a bleak remark or hint Typically a suggestive or disparaging one. So the part we need to focus on is a suggestive. So I would make suggestive comments here, which are alluding to a sexual something, something. So a girl might say, oh my gosh, that's so hard. And I'll be like, yeah, it is so hard. What are you telling me, babe? <laughs> I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'll be like, um, she will like, say, um, you know, we say the mad things like she was like, oh, um, almost fell down. Like, you can fall down on this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, we'd say so many stupid things because, you know what? There was, <clears throat> in my in my youth anyway, <clears throat> a lot of people were making innuendos because one, it was funny at the time. The society that we were in, the friendship groups we were in, that was funny. Yeah, we didn't see it as anything because, well, first of all, when we were young anyway, most of us weren't even having sex anyway, but people were saying they were. Okay, some people were, like, you know what I'm saying? But... I found that, okay, if everyone else is doing it, I've got to do it because that's what's getting the girls. Let me try it also. So I developed a bit of a sharp tongue, yeah, where I make innuendos all the time. And I started to discover, okay, innuendos isn't just saying it, it's the tone. You know what I'm saying? If I just say to you, I'm feeling you, you know. No, I'm not even going to lie to you, I'm feeling you. You can feel my intonation. You can feel what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm alluding to, but I haven't said anything. I said, I'm just, I'm just said, I'm feeling you, you know. Listen, just give me one night with you, man. Now, you already know what I'm alluding to. I just said, give me one night. I didn't say, let's have sex. I didn't say, let me put my dick in you. I didn't say, I'm just gonna be real. I didn't say, let, let me have the poussoir. I didn't say any of that. But you know what I'm alluding to when I say those lines, right? So it's an, an, it's an alluding to, it's leading up to that point. Now, I, what I discovered was if the girl would allow me, to, if the girl would respond to that flirting, then more than chances are, more than likely the chances are, this girl is happy for you to engage in some frolicking, some madness, some, some business, you understand? And when I got later on in the school years, I started to realize, the girls that were connected with me and replying with those sexual jokes, the illusions, the innuendos, yeah, that were laughing, that were laughing, they were laughing because they didn't find me creepy. Have you ever noticed that girls normally say, the guy that's creepy, it's not because he's creepy, it's because he's creepy to them. You understand? 
they don't like him. <laughs> so whatever he says, it's creepy. You understand? We deeped it. Because when, when I'm saying it, and someone else is saying it, they're saying he's creepy. Or they might say, I'm creepy, he's not creepy. It's almost like the guy that's asking for hugs all the time. But the guy that they want to ask for hugs, they don't give a damn. But you asking for hugs, you're the creepy one. Why? Because they don't like you. So I started to discover, okay, this is what's working. Okay, so if the girl replies, I'm in. You understand? So that's what made me continue that down that road early on in the days before I had Christ in my life, yeah? Um, <clears throat> um, and also as well, within that society as well, and within our ranks of friendship groups at the time before Christ really came into my life, um, innuendos were humorous, and the society that we're in talks about sex 24 seven. If we're not seeing it on TV, we are talking about it. If we're not talking about it, we're making jokes about it. If you're not making jokes about it, we're actually doing it. You understand? So, you know, from very early on, I weren't doing it. I wanted to do it, but I had been, <clears throat> I had been conditioned through television and films and, and and what I hear on the playground to know certain things that are sexual. You understand? Now, I remember I didn't even know what cum was till I was like 17. Now, someone might say, "Raw how?" Because I, blood, I was really sheltered, my guy. It's not until I came to this this school, which was more white people than black people, that I started to realize these guys are talking about com. I said, "What's com?" He said, "What do you mean don't know com?" Now, I remember, I remember, my girl. Even, someone had a girl. She's like, "How do you know what com is?" I, said, I don't know what com is. What's com? What is that? You mean oh, you mean oh, oh that what it means? Damn. <clears throat> so you can tell, um, you know, um, in the society that we're in, this is comfortable. Com this is comfortable grounds to be talking about sex, to be doing sex, to be engaging in humour about sex. And especially when you're around, um, you know, the younger generation and a certain demographic as well, they make a lot of sexual jokes. Everything becomes sexual jokes. You know what I'm saying? Like, even men amongst men sometimes, like, in certain demographics, you know, you know, I'll definitely do ya. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do ya. Yeah, yeah, you're looking pretty, mate. I'll, I'll fucking do ya. Blood, everything becomes sexual. It's like blood. What's going on? Do you understand? But... So that becomes a normalization in your thought process and the synapses that are in your mind, they connect instantly. So as soon as you hear certain words, you begin to instantly release an innuendo because you know what that brings. And so that was the toughest thing for me um, leading up to that. And so when I was dealing with, um, you know, my early days in Christianity, when I got saved, I found it very hard to turn that off. Like, because there are females who are also growing, I'm growing, and we still got the fleshy side of us that is very, very, very at large. So the jokes I made, I, I may have just made a David joke and I would have remixed it with, you know how David bear girls on it? I'm trying to get you still, you understand? Now, I, listen, that I'm trying to get you ain't, I'm trying to wife you. That is, I'm trying to get you still, you understand? See, I saw them another 700 concubines in that, yeah? I'm trying to do you as well, yeah, let's see. Get me. Maybe even do a little Absalom thing on top of the roof, you understand? Yeah, you know the thing, yeah? Now listen, I can steal you from your man, David Star, you understand? Uzziah, Uriah things, you know? See, like, all of that, I'm just linking things in, but that's that's the way my mind was thinking. You understand? It's even hard for me to think now because it's been so long. But all of that behavior was gearing me up to when I find myself in a room. Because what God was saying is like, listen, you don't find yourself in a room just like that. It starts with a roof cave, a roof with a tile missing, and then the roof caves in. So, you know, I had to try and unlearn the innuendos. Um, I had to stop. I had to stop learning how to. And even today, I remember the other day. It was just the other day, and a girl said, "Ah, oh, this thing is so hard," and I had to stop myself from saying, "You know what's hard, baby?" You know what I'm saying? Because like that's how conditioned I am from the past. You understand? That I have to even check myself in my mind that yo better don't go down that lane because that's gonna open up doors. Um, and so yeah, a lot of these things, you know, I won't even read a scripture. Um, and it's Ephesians five verse four. It says, "Let there be no filthiness and silky silly talk or coarse, obscene or vulgar joking, because such things are inappropriate, are not appropriate for believers. But instead, speak of your thankfulness to God." And you know, the reason why I'm I'm, I'm talking about this subject is because. Your lust starts there. <laughs> you don't think your lust started at the explore page on Instagram. No, that's another story though. Um, your lust actually started at the fact that your mind is conceiving it. And it's what James talks about, the fact that your mind has to conceive it, you think it, you know, and then you act it out. And then it becomes a sin and da da da. So all of this is a process. It's a systematic process your mind is consciously doing. There is no sin that is unconscious. You are doing it consciously. 
Everything you've done is deliberate. Don't think that it was un... That, uh, you know, and that's why that theology where someone says, only God doesn't forgive that deliberate... No, no. Every sin you committed was deliberate. Conscious choice you made. Why? Because you've been freed from sin. Therefore, now you have power over sin to say what? No. No. Do you get me? So yeah, when it comes to the innuendos thing, it was a tough thing, man. So when I got saved, that was one of the hardest things to do. And since obviously I took on a celibacy journey, I think once I've one of the things I've really realized is that, um, and we'll talk about this in another video, is that I'm not seeking to say quick bars and quick lines. I'm not seeking to to grab your ass and to, to, to touch you up anymore. I'm not seeking those things. I'm now seeking the heart of the individual and I'm actually seeking the person's soul. I want I want to see who they are. Um, and this only comes through the fact that you're no longer driven by this urge and this fleshly feeling. And so the Bible says we should walk after the spirit and not the flesh. You know, this walking in the spirit is a consistent conscious action to do that requires food of the spirit to feed you to keep walking in the spirit. Because you're not always in the spirit. You understand? You need to be conscious of it. Um, so, yeah, guys, if you are struggling with your tongue. Yeah, more than likely, you see, I'm really thinking about now, I've made a joke about tongue. When my mind, do you see what I'm saying? My mind started thinking about where it was going. And I don't know if some of you are probably struggling with this as well. One of the ways that really helped me to stop, I guess, stop being an innuendo king is simply by just reading the word. And what was happening was that I was being prompted. I need you to understand this. There is no immediate cure to this. You don't just stop one day. But there was a cure to it where I became, the Holy Spirit began to alert me of certain things that I'm saying. Yeah. And it's almost like you feel kind of like your stomach feels a bit queasy, almost like you're going down a roller coaster. You start to catch these kind of feelings from the Holy Spirit and he's letting you know, Chale, be careful, don't say that bar. Yeah. Or you said it and you're like, Holy Spirit's like, listen, don't say that again, innit? That's going to lead you there. And I get these promptings whenever I'm too close to the fire. I know that, okay, cool. Duh, 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 duh. Like even now, when I hug a girl, I'm like, uh, and I'm, I'm, my mind is starting to think, I get that queasy thing in my stomach, I'm like, oh, oh, Chelly, don't, don't release the hug, release the hug, release the hug, cuz. Because the Holy Spirit, what he's doing, he's telling me there are boundaries, there's spiritual boundaries now. And I'll let you know, these are the boundaries you're going, stop here, park the car, you understand? And I, I want you to get to that place. The only way to get to that place is one, through reading your word and actually spending time in prayer, especially prayer in this particular case. Because what it does, it just alerts your spirit to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Um, uh, it's almost like a car that has the electronic, has the, um, the you know reverse parking screen, yeah. And it's like when the car is on and in reverse mode, the the, the screen will come on. But it's a consciousness, it's saying you got to turn it on. You understand by allowing the Holy Spirit to just guide you in all all parts of your life. So yeah, just want to drop that little, little little one. We're going to talk about another one. We're going to talk about um, how I'm feeling in this um, this celibacy um, phase because I think there's a lot of things I want to discuss in that. Uh, but yeah, make sure you stay locked, stay loaded. Appreciate you guys. You know what it is, baby. You know what I do.